To feel the power. Uh, this is Colin Crandall over there and myself, Adam Rorta, with another amazing episode of MMA Power Hour uh, brought to you by Nessa's Hemp and My Mocha Tribe. Uh, head on over to MyMochaTribe.com, get yourself a nice 10% discount on some amazing gourmet coffee. On uh, checkout, go ahead and use MMA Power 10 for that nice 10% off. And then also make sure you're checking out the full, full spectrum CBDA oil put out by Nessus Hemp. They have an amazing discount. Uh, they partnered up with us to go ahead and get word out and also get you guys a nice hefty discount on their uh, product. It is MMAPH.NessusHemp.com. Absolutely. And uh, this is tested by both Adam and myself. It does work. It's not just inert crap that some people have <laughs> out there, but uh, really, really true uh cbd a and uh and great quality with uh, research behind it and independent researchers paid to make sure they had the best quality stuff so definitely check out Ness's hemp you will not be disappointed and it'll help our show a little bit and uh so we'd appreciate it and so we have a fantastic show coming at you i'm really excited as i usually am but i'm very excited because we've got some amazing people coming on to chat all of whom have very very significant and important fights coming up in the next one month or less so we've got three great guests can't wait to jump into it a big event this weekend we've got some bellator fights going on we've got some ufc fights going on we've got some more one championship fights uh and uh you know just a ton of mma action super excited about seeing that florida event ufc 261 we will have a representative there covering mma power hour uh covering the event for mma power hour in person but i can't wait to finally see ufc fights again with fans in the audience i'm sure dr adam rota you're excited to see that again i mean we're all stoked yeah. uh, did you see uh the card here coming up in vegas that's going to be a full full capacity fight no, coming on no did not know that that must just come out how soon is that about a month or so away uh, something like that I, I i can't remember i'd have to go back to the website and look but i'm not gonna do that right now because there's so many production aspects i gotta Absolutely. handle while we're, Without a doubt. we're here but uh you know also coming up we have another exciting weekend a, a lot of people think of the fights as a circus uh of the boxing uh, uh matchup between Askren and uh Jake, uh, Paul. Jake Paul yep. that's actually kind of exciting to me I I, I I really yep. find it exciting because it's it's uh in a lot of ways two x factors going against each other that's what's going to make it fun and exciting and some people are betting on whether Askren's going to get a uh, uh takedown in this. <laughs> yeah I know right I remember when it's McGregor... literally one of the line item, line bets so yeah it's funny I remember when McGregor fought uh Floyd they were all thinking that maybe uh Connor was going to try some kind of a takedown or a leg kick or a throw, <laughs> although Connor really had kind of prided himself on being more of a striker. In this case, Ben really is a grappler, although I remember in that Connor fight, someone told me that just in case, just in case that were to happen, Floyd had a provision uh, that Connor had to sign saying if there were any MMA type of techniques used, then he would forfeit his entire purse. So I wouldn't be surprised probably if Ben had to sign something like that as well. Uh, and although I suppose it, Ben got... Yeah, I, I, I doubt it on this one. First off, it's Triller, an amazing organization. For those of you who don't know, news just came out. Triller acquired Fight TV. Uh, news came out earlier this morning. Uh, but Triller is, uh, you know, really trying to switch things over to the long format pay-per-view and and you know we're we're now a triller show yep. uh, via fight tv which is awesome uh but uh uh yeah i i think with uh a trailer getting involved here i think they're gonna kind of leave it a little more open they really are about the entertainment aspect of everything uh really trying to ramp everything up but they are about the sport too so don't get it wrong i mean come on we look at this boxing match of uh on the undercard here uh uh frank mirror uh fight uh facing uh steve cunningham interesting I, I mean, that's that's an exciting one i mean I don't, I don't think frank actually stands a chance you got frank 
uh, behind you there. Uh, yeah, we got a character figurine of Frank <laughs> Mir right here behind us, behind me over there. And but you never know, he's such a tough guy. I mean, and that's what makes you think about Askren having a chance too. He's such a rugged individual. He's been in there with absolute killers stepping into the fire, and he's taken some shots. And he has a very good chin. Now, when you're not expecting a flying knee, it's hard to have a good chin, as he did not, as his chin got annihilated against Masvidal. But without any flying knees allowed, I, I'm thinking it's possible that Ben may not be really getting too hurt too badly by anything that jake paul throws but then we'll see what ben can throw it's going to be interesting i'm i am excited about that fight i am well anyway. I, I i'm honestly more excited about the frank mayor uh steve cunningham fight i mean steve cunningham is a two-time ibf champion yeah and uh, th i think this is really that uh uh, MMA versus boxing match that yeah. really I I think there's more truth and honesty behind this and integrity to the match match up yeah. here yeah. than the, the the Conor McGregor Floyd Mayweather uh, bout and I I think this one uh, really stands to uh, give us the testament on on the reality of whether. MMA and boxing, uh, MMA in the world of boxing can stand a chance. Yeah, absolutely. It makes you think. I know that Fr uh, Francis Ngannou, our heavyweight champion, has been talking about uh, the, that he might be up for a multi-multi-million dollar payday if uh, Tyson Fury or Anthony Joshua wanted to fight him. And that is an interesting thought, although I think most of the people would not make Francis the favorite in a pure boxing match with those guys. But I tell you, if Francis lands first, anyone's in trouble. Anyway, I know we have our our first guest ready if you want to he get is support. absolutely ready sitting here waiting for us so we'll Excellent. give him a and then, call and get a skype dance cool. going and then i see you have his file there yeah i sure do fantastic work as always dr adam Rota. i'm trying to get ready i absolutely appreciate it be prepared this skype is a skype dance. dance for any of our new viewers <laughs> hey johnny are you there yes hello excellent well we are live man so let me give you a proper introduction and then we'll start with you we have video excellent and so what i want to do is uh make sure that we uh tell everyone that we're super excited to have this first guest on our show dr adam Rohr, if you could bring up his file for me there. in a moment here give excellent. me a second I, I can only do so many things at once that's Colin. true you're <laughs> right about that thank you for your effort anyway super excited ladies and gentlemen to have this uh first guest on our show for the first time big fight coming up in bellator uh on may 7th against henry corral we're talking about the man called Cupcakes, Johnny Campbell. Welcome to the show, Johnny. Thank you so much. It's great to be here. I appreciate it, man. I heard a lot of great things about you. How did you get that Cupcakes name? I like it. It's unique. Who And who had it first? Well, Misha Tate was Cupcake, but you have Cupcakes. How long have you had that uh, nickname? Where did that come from? My first fight that I ever uh, walked out for, they announced me as Cupcakes. So that was 2009. I don't know if Misha might have me beat there, but I bet it's pretty close. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, somebody just rattled it off in the gym. Um, and South Shore sport fighting, we, uh, as a family, we love to kind of uh, poke fun at one another often. Uh, more often than not probably so they like latched on to cupcakes thought that was fantastic and I like smile and enjoy my training and um, my life quite uh, quite obviously so cupcakes sort of fit and I dig it too I, I just feel like you know you got to be a little different that purple cow um, is a nice book that if uh, if those of uh, out there who haven't read it should uh, it's good to be different and when we can kind of find that uniqueness in ourselves and kind of run with it, I feel like good things happen. So I agree. Very I well stated. Always good to be original. And I think you might have beat Misha. I know she went by takedown uh, Tate until maybe like 2013, 14, or 15 or something. So, yeah, you had oh. the cupcakes first. I like that. Well, you are from the East Coast fighting out of South Shore Sport Fighting. Is that right? Or have you moved to a different gym? Yes, sir. No, that's um, that is my my mainstay. Uh, I get my most of my work done at South Shore Sport Fighting. I, I uh, frequent the UFC gym in Boston, nice. and also uh, a few other places. I got it. You know, uh, being a thirty three plus whatever have you fight veteran, I've accumulated. Um, Get some fantastic friends in the game and i'm always able to begin training uh somewhere but south shore that's that's my home very cool now south shore i know isn't a, as big a school as like american top team or aka or sanford mma but do they have some people that that have uh, some names either in muay thai or in mma or in kickboxing anybody that you could throw out that people might have heard of or who are the people that tend to help you the most uh, especially for this game? yeah 
Absolutely. For the, something like this, uh, I got a, a gentleman, D. J. D. Sabatino, Zach, who um, is a pro um, around the, these parts. Fantastic. He's a 55er and just a, a monster wrestler and jiu-jitsu practitioner. Um, guys like Josh Grisby, who is a ex-UFC fighter, who's just like a phenom um fantastic fighter who just like life is just a crazy roller coaster ride and yep. josh didn't necessarily um like fulfill his potential but the guy is still working in the gym um and helping me out even to this day with uh, a guy like manny bermudez same kind of idea just uh, like a freaking freak athlete and fighter who uh yeah he made it all the way to the ufc accumulated victories in the ufc and then kind of uh, it's just not what he loves you know i'm, I'm yeah. here yeah. at th you know 30 fights later losses winning streaks injuries i don't give a fuck i love this shit i love uh, fighting absolutely. and i love testing myself against great fighters and um and yeah man he's another guy who's just uh, everything i mean he's given me so much over the years as far as striking and and um and and grappling and jujitsu uh and then some other guys who may or may not have names like uh, a guy named frank sforza who um is a killer pro out of south shore who finished i think six and one and retired but his wrestling and his voice is inside my head almost every day nice. um so and then guys like kim moy who i'm going to be sparring with on friday who another one just a fantastic fighter i think he finished like 11 and 2 retired recently and he's just still in the game like just loving getting better and uh, challenging himself so I have so many great guys. I got black belts who are whooping my ass on Sundays, teaching me how to uh, be a better uh, grappler. So I feel like up here in the Northeast, we have like a small Dagestan, mm -hmm. uh, and we just are very much under-respected or disrespected in a lot of ways comparatively to these other regions uh, because we just eat each other alive up here. I mean, if you get out of this area with a good record, holy shit, you are a fucking animal. Only yep. the best of the best get to the top in this area because you will kill yourself trying to get there and i'm just somebody who uh, you knock me down a hundred times i will continue to get up and i am still here and henry corrales is uh, a fellow that i am lit up to fight i i'm so so grateful for this opportunity and it's going to be uh it's going to be a fantastic experience trying to take his head off his shoulders. Absolutely, man. I like uh, I like how you talk. That's uh, exactly the attitude you want to have and the focus. You know, I remember a guy that I think is retired because we've been on the air for four years. And I remember a guy that I think might have been out of your school. Did you used to have a Jimmy the Tooth Manning over there? Yeah, yep. Yeah. He's a brown belt uh, jujitsu wizard who, uh, great story, great guy, fantastic athlete. Love him. Yeah, really, really amazing guy. Fought into his early 40s and uh, just an amazing guy. And uh, yeah, a lot of great people on the East Coast. I actually I grew up in Michigan and I spent time around the Midwest in different states as well as the West Coast. But I had never been to the East Coast until about three years ago when I went uh, as UFC credential media to UFC Boston, the one where Joe Lozon made his comeback if you remember that fight card where dominic reyes beat weidman right and i loved it man i mean i really loved it like right away as a midwest kid uh i felt at home in the east coast and i always felt michigan kind of had a little bit of east coast flavor because we're going more toward the east coast than like iowa and minnesota and places like that right and so i just right yep. away felt welcomed i mean like literally going to the to the bars and the restaurants and they're talking to me like I'm an old friend, like I'm a regular, you know, and it's just, you know, good people back there. Really, really good people in New England, I got to say. Yeah, the cold does something to you, I think, in a lot of ways. It makes you, like, tough and hard yeah. and friendly. And, uh, yeah, it's it's a good place to be. I'm, I'm blessed to Ab be here. Absolutely. So when you got the call here for the Henry Corrales fight, had your had you already been in talks at all with Bellator, or was this just a completely random thing? I, uh, somewhat. So they had thrown me uh, a guy's name who, uh, Magomed Magomedov, who happens to be probably one of the best fighters on planet Earth. Very and I guy. told him recently, like, show me the money. I'll fight that guy for yeah. sure. But right. I mean, I, I'd like to be compensated for that. And, uh, and they went with another gentleman <clears throat> who's a fine fighter. Um, 
he got whooped up pretty good though. Mega Madoff, that dude is a savage. I mean, no, no joke. Yeah. Uh, probably one of the best on the planet. So, uh, but yeah, they've been just, you know, they poke at me every so often, like, hey, we got this guy, and. I say yes, probably about 99% of the time. Um, it's just they have like a panel of people who decide who fights who. So um, I was I was selected, you know, for uh, for this one, and I'm so pumped, so pumped to be able to uh, to get in there and work for one of the biggest organizations in the world. Absolutely, and it should be a great fight. And I have a feeling since you're fighting Corrales, it's not going to be like any dark fight or anything. That should be on Showtime. I'm almost positive. I mean, they're not going to – I mean, Henry's just been in too many fights there for them to tell him, well, since you're fighting a newer guy, you can – no, he's, his camp wouldn't go for that. So you're, you'll be on Showtime for sure, and uh, I'm excited to see it happen. So this will, be, uh, this will be the first time that I think Henry drops down to bantamweight. Let me ask your opinion because you do seem like mm-hmm. to be a, a really – educated fight fan as well as a fighter i can tell just by talking from talking to you what is it man that makes some people's journey to a lower weight class work out exactly the way they want it where all of a sudden they dehydrate they make the weight it's not that bad they're the bigger man on fight day and 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 the big brother their opponent and everything's great but then the other half the time they 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 the bear they barely make the weight they got nothing left they can't take a punch and they get smashed what is it just kind of like random or the or the person's body or mindset or or you know what what makes that happen and and what do you think i mean obviously you want the best of henry corrales but uh how do you think he's going to play out he looked pretty shredded as a featherweight and now he's going to be a bantamweight what are your thoughts Sorry. on all that <clears throat> Uh, so, <clears throat> like researching him a little bit, he has, I believe, fought a bantamweight back uh, throughout his career, early on his career, when I'm sure he was maybe a little bit leaner yeah, in, yeah, uh, right. in general. So, uh, I, I think this is going to be a very interesting experience for Henry Corrales. I, I'm so comfortable at 135 pounds, and I have it to a science. I've made 125, and I I was that gentleman who got down there and then realized, oh shit, I'm at five percent body fat when i'm at 35 and now i'm just gonna shave off eight pounds of muscle to make weight yeah sure i made weight but who i was a shell of the person that i was or can be at 135 and- kind of like when dillashaw <laughs> went down and fought uh and fought cejudo he looked like a skeleton remember a couple years ago he have to be yeah Corrales is at like 6% body fat, maybe, maybe less when he's on fight night for a 45. I mean, he's a pretty good sized dude at five foot eight, I believe. Um, yeah, he's going to have to make 136, and then he's going to have to deal with me, who is f- just going to be coming in fast, explosive. I'm going to have 100% of who I am that night. And I do hope that he brings I, I know he's going to be a fantastic fighter i mean he's an outstanding athlete so i expect the best from him but they, i have fought my last five fights nobody can handle my my punches at 135 pounds when i hit them their brain shakes and they fall down and then i finish them on the floor if i don't knock them clean out i mean literally four out of my last five opponents all got hurt pretty much on the feet and then i finished them on the floor so nice it's gonna be a very similar thing he overextends. He loops his punches. He's got a good check hook, but I, I just, I'm a supremely confident in the fact that I will find his jaw or one of his temples, and I will collapse that man. Nice. I like it. And I don't think there's any bad blood between you and him at all, is there? I respect him incredibly. I think he's a great fighter, and I think that I know I saw a funny or I you know glimpsed a video on YouTube of him talking about prison fights and i i honestly believe that that's what this is going to be we are both scrappers in a way that we fight more than just like boxing and jujitsu and we're not compartmentalized like that we are in there fighting the other person as if it's the last piece of food on earth and that is what i intend to do and i'm gonna pull every bit of him that out that i can and i'm going to uh, i'm 
I'm going to just hammer his brain until he cannot take it anymore. I, I like it, man. That's the key. You got to do that. Well, speaking of that great strategy and that intensity that you have, man, tell us a little bit about you, man. I'd like for people to get to know you better because, as you probably know, you can cheer for people you know. Like if, if, you were, if you were a fan of an action movie and, let's say, Jason Statham all of a sudden started going to the bar where you hang out sometimes or whatever – you might cheer for him because you're like, oh, I see that dude, you know, eating a corned beef sure. sandwich and, and, you know, like that. So what? <laughs> tell us tell us about you, but do this. Go back to maybe like high school or something where I think a lot of guys get into combat sports or like to fight and give me like the last 10 years, but take out any points that might not be exciting. Give me some of the either exci exciting and interesting points about your journey over the last, say, 15 years from when you first started getting into some sort of combat or, or something I would imagine. Man, I mean, <clears throat> realistically it started, I were so early as far as like, you know, fifth grade and, and before then, uh, you know, the high school wrestling coaches came in and during fifth grade and for like a week in gym class, we did uh, some like high school wrestling and learned wrestling so that they would be prepared if anybody wanted to wrestle in high school. And uh, no, not a joke from fifth grade on. I mean, that's all I, I've really thought about is fighting people and and to a detriment to tip, typically because socially it's not exactly acceptable to be fighting people uh on the streets and things but i would do so and i would pick them and man i just uh, high school hockey uh m some of the biggest and most exciting memories that i have from my high school is just uh is absolutely labeling people in hockey games and hearing 400 people screaming and chanting and smashing the boards i live to entertain people i mean i'm always wanting to make people laugh or whatever it may be and i love fighting and and pretty much always have um and a lot of times, like I said, it got me into trouble many times, many, many times, and got me into like some bad situations where like defending people that I wouldn't have to, and then end up um, like arrested at one point for assault and battery on a police officer, even though I didn't even touch anybody. Right. And I was found completely innocent of good. that, by the way. Good, good. But um, but yeah, it was all related to just like being wanting to have like a big dick basically you know right. like i was always like picked on for the most part in high school being like the lower 25 percentile of like size right people thought that i could would be a great person too like oh i will bully this kid right. and then that'll show everybody else that i'm like this big tough guy but i would typically uh do my best to fight back and and it all spiraled towards like you just need something that is um like structured but still has that same outlet of competition and and combat i mean i feel like so many people love fighting and that's why I, one of the reasons i love it so much is that universally it is something that people respect and love mm -hmm. whether it's mike tyson fighting when he's 50 or jake fucking paul right boxing ben askren yeah everyone wants to know what's going to happen when those when two people fight each other and it, it is just what i was meant to do for sure and um you know i had some issues as far as like uh, just mental problems. Um, mm -hmm. My thoughts would just destroy me if it wasn't a girlfriend. It was like coworkers or uh, video games or whatever it was. Anger was always such a huge part of my adolescence and and even like uh, some sometimes my adulthood. Even to this day, still trying to like get control over it all the time. But um, it just pushed me to a point where martial arts was the, the like the gateway to happiness practically or enlightenment if you want to call it that but mm -hmm. self-discovery and this mma thing is so much more than just like a paycheck or getting in there and fighting some guy you know I, I learned so much about myself every single fight and then i can tell everyone else a little bit more or a, i can shed some light on what this thing is that we're all doing here this like life thing you know and everyone has got struggles and everybody's trying to get through this adventure that we're that we're on and when i fight i learn stuff that i can then tell everybody else about and uh man it's such a 
blessing to be able to do this. There's just so many people on earth that don't have, you know, they don't, they couldn't even if they wanted to, they, they, if they, you know, if it's a disability or whatever it is, you know, social issues or, you know, financial problems or whatever, like mm -hmm. there are things that people want to do that they can't go and do. And I get to do the one thing that I really love and man, it is fantastic. So when you're watching me on May 7th, you know that I am in like the happiest place that I could possibly be. And I'm about to do the most fun thing that I've ever done. And, um, and it's, it's always a beautiful thing. That's why people like watching me fight. Absolutely, man. I like to hear that because they always say when you're having fun, the better fighters can be that much better because you're relaxing and enjoying yourself. And that's cool, man. I like to hear that. And it definitely sounds like this is something that's meant for you, that's brought you peace, that's brought you ability to handle anger. And, uh, you know, and, and that it is so important. And, you know, and also agreed. Huge respect to you because I think that, doing something that's that's like this being a professional mma fighter a professional athlete of any kind very few people make it to that level and uh, a lot of people just don't really have the the ability to find something that's going to be something that, that that's their passion man so big respect to you for having found that man and and i definitely think it's a great thing hey let me pick your brain on that one fight you mentioned man jake paul against ben Askren. let me ask your thoughts man because i'm so anxious to hear it but before I do, let me set it up this way. I think that 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 could be a competitive fight. I think a lot of people are selling Ben short. I think that his his experience being in there with absolute killer strikers, even though you know he kind of avoided getting hit by them, but he's taken some shots. I think some people are thinking that somehow Jake Paul is going to be as devastating a striker as some of the strikers Ben has faced in the in the in the octagon or ring and he isn't. I think Ben's live in this fight, but can you tell me what your thoughts are and and how you think if Ben does win this how he does it and do you think he's going to cheat and try any takedowns or any grappling or what's your thought? Well, <clears throat> I mean uh Deontay Wilder and Tyson Fury too. Uh, I mean, there's an awful lot of grappling in that match. You right. know, boxing is a very interesting game, and I think that if Ben chooses to just put his forehead on that guy's chest and whizzer him and drag him around and push him around, that however many rounds this is, six maybe, I mean, it could be a very interesting, potentially boring, but very interesting match that um, I, don't, I don't know if – Jake's just never really fought, fought anyone ever. Right, right. And I think that even um, even Askren, just his composure and, and everything, I think uh, puts him at a huge advantage, definitely. Um, but you just never – Paul's an athlete. That yeah. dude is, you know, and yeah. when you're that rich and you just don't have to do anything really other than like sign T-shirts or whatever it is that he does um, – you can train all day long so i'm sure he is training like a monster um it's just like can he train hard enough to buy yeah to hit uh Askren and knock him out i don't know that's yeah. gonna be really really tough it, it is interesting to see you know there was a brazilian fighter i forget his name a brazilian ufc fighter or i think maybe he used to be in the ufc he was that guy remember if you watch any ufc fights that would put on the joker paint face paint yeah yep. yeah and he actually was called in to train with uh with jake and he had some complaints that they you know offered him low money and and, the, and jake wasn't super respectful when he came in there but the bottom line is what he said was that although jake seems to have some good technique he said when he was in there he didn't get the feeling that jake was like a really rugged hard guy like an mma fighter he said really this guy struck me as more of like an adventurous type of guy uh, yeah, rather yeah. than a hard professional fighter does that would like you kind of probably agree with that? Who, yeah yeah like the wealthy guy who wants to like mountain climb or whatever and right. then he like freezes to death on day two or right shit. right exactly yeah. um yeah for, that makes a, a lot of sense i would in Askren, i mean He's just a, a he's a pretty gritty man, I would yeah, think. Yeah, um, yeah. And I think he looks pretty good. People have said things about his hip or whatever, and I mean, I 
I watched like a montage of him training. I mean, he's moving around pretty darn good for a dude who supposedly has like a weird hip. So I bet he comes into this thing in in damn good shape, and I bet he puts uh, a lot of pressure on Jake Paul. Yeah, I agree. One of our one of our uh, watchers here, Mint Diggity, said Ben has a great chin, bro. I agree with that, and I think also uh, agreed is our guest here um and uh and uh johnny definitely is with that and then also what's up from ralph and james hey guys so yeah johnny i'll tell you man i appreciate your insight on that what um what are you feeling uh your future is uh, assuming you get by uh henry corrales that's immediately going to kind of put you in the mix and i think we're talking the mix at 135 who's the 135 champ over there now or is that vacant uh, right this moment, that's a good question. It, it may be vacant. Yeah. Um, I know that, yeah, somebody moved up recently in weight classes, I think. So, um, yeah, I think that that's exactly what it does is it puts me directly um, – at the forefront i mean i i said in a in a brief interview recently like i think that this um no joke it propels me directly to the top um and i intend on cashing in on cashing in on that uh in a violent way uh i feel like it is like my opportunity to be I mean, like whatever it may be, viral, if you want to call it, or when you step in the cage on something like this level, if you go out there and you are spectacular, you you could be red panty night that night. That night, I could be red panty fucking night. And that is my intention, is to walk in there like I own that place, look over across at a fine fighter, and then I'm going to dismantle him as far as take his head off of his shoulders if i hit him in or anywhere near his head it is going to be like a like a anti um uh, armor missile it's like the missile can miss the target and still just blow shit up and that's what my punches are going to be like if i miss him by an inch he is going to fall over by the wind probably i love it i love it well that's a lot of confidence and you know your ability let me ask you this though with all that confidence do you, are you also kind of able to make sure you're 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 not being reckless because obviously you don't necessarily want to do an Anderson Silva where you put your hands down to your sides and stick your forehead out. You know, I don't think you're talking about that. Uh, you know, right? But um, like let me give you an example. I, I'm a BJJ purple belt and and I was really never more than a weekend warrior except for I trained during the week, but I, I never put myself on a level of any serious competitor. But I would train hard. I would sometimes train with some people that would that would compete at a high level. And uh, I remember when I did my first tournament uh, outside of the school, actually, I think it was before I got my purple belt, and uh, I was nervous. I was facing someone that had actually had like 12 matches in 111 and even had competed in a pan in a uh, pancrase tournament. And, okay. I, and I remember saying to myself, you know what? I do believe I can win. I want to win, but I one thing I know is I don't want to get smoked and subbed in the first 10 seconds. I just said to myself, I'm going to, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go for it, but I'm not going to get subbed in the first 10 seconds, no matter what. And so that was kind of my thought. And actually I ended up doing really well and win. And I was like, I maxed, awesome. yeah, it was great. I maxed my muscles so much at the end that it felt like my arms were full of water or lead. Ooh, they, I, they were straight by my side and I could barely bend them, <laughs> you know? And I remember it literally took me like seven minutes to re- catch my breath. <laughs> and it was a 10 minute, I think it was a 10 minute match. Great right? feeling, right? Yeah, <laughs> oh, it really was, it really was. So like at a lower <laughs> level yeah so at a lower level compared to what you guys do that was my fun but do you do you go in there with the exciting aggressive attitude you have but also making sure to like be smart or are you not even worried about that because you're that confident in your chin or you know what what is the attitude because i mean obviously you've seen some guys in bellator and the ufc that say man i'm just taking this i'm taking this crazy man out and they go after the other guy they walk right into a shot and the fight's oh, yeah. over. And it's like so you're I think you're I mean, yeah, you're you've got that in mind at least to 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 be smart with your aggressiveness, right? 
Yeah, exactly. So, I mean, if you watch um, Mr. Corrales' fight with Aaron Pico, similar, or that's the type of outcome right there. Uh, Pico comes in aggressive, and um, and Corrales clips him and knocks him out. So, a 100%. Um, he, this man's got a good uh, check lead hook. He tends to be, it seems as though, more of a counter striker, I'd say. So, yeah, my intention is stay behind the jab. Um set up my big shots so my big uh, shots are most deadly because you just don't really see them coming my timing is just different my footwork is just different my in and out is a little bit uh different i angle a little better or um you know more precisely maybe than some other people i just um yeah I, he is going to be thinking one thing and being hit by another and that is what shuts the lights off so nice. um yes i was supremely confident in my defense uh but yeah my my approach will be intelligent most definitely awesome we've only got about two to three minutes left here with you but i want to i want to ask you a question that i don't think i've heard asked before i really i really i'm anxious to hear your answer here you know how like gamblers or or sometimes media or fight analysts are frequently watching weigh-ins because they want to see if anyone looks really really gaunt really off balance really sucked in right i never thought Good. right i never thought to ask as a fighter do you would you or most fighters kind of notice that of your opponent and and is it something that you look for is it really obvious to you i mean you know what's your thought as far as getting up there like if this is a really bad weight cut for him are you going to be able to see evidence of that when you face off with him and the way after the weigh-ins most likely i think so we already did we discussed it in my my team as far as you know if he misses weight if he makes weight you know it's you know he's he's 34 yep. he's a, not a young gentleman i mean trying to all of a sudden come back down to 35 is not an easy task so right. yes we already discussed that if he comes in a pound heavy two pounds heavy we're going to take a look at him and make an assessment you know yep. did he do everything he could to try to make weight or is he trying to cheat out that right. last little bit i think you definitely see it um it's uh yeah cutting weight is a is a very very interesting thing it's brutal there's uh you know uh, muscle spasms there's yeah. you know emotional swings it's a it's a wacky time so you definitely can see it and i'll know um and he, he's a professional i'm sure he'll put it back on very well but um yeah scientifically we just know that uh, it's going to be a very difficult uh, challenge for him to make this weight. We he, we know what he knows, and he's thinking about it right now. I bet I yeah. almost guarantee yeah. right this moment yep. it's on his mind. So yep. we'll see if he does, and I, I do hope he does. Yeah, absolutely. Well, I definitely hope he makes the weight and make it uh, a fair fight as it should be. But I'll tell you, Johnny, uh, I really appreciate you jumping on here. You're a good guy, a good East Coast guy. I can tell. I love that you're doing something that makes you happy and that you're bringing your passion uh, uh, to this sport. Tell us where people can uh, can find you on social media if they want to support you and say what's up and let you know that they're cheering for you. Johnny CCMMA uh, pretty much across the board for Twitter, Instagram, uh, Snapchat too. And then uh, Facebook is Johnny Cupcakes Campbell or Cupcakes Johnny Campbell. Maybe it was updated too recently. So, um, yeah, I would love it. Uh, I'd love it when, when people reach out and whatnot. So it would be fantastic. Um, I got like tons of love from Brazil after my last uh, fight. So, um, yeah, it's just fantastic to hear from people uh, and fight fans. So, yeah, I love it. Johnny CCMMA. Absolutely. And you guys watch on the east coast this is one of your east coast boys so you got to support him and uh johnny i look forward to a great performance from you man some excitement and uh i wish you the very best in going and getting that w on may 7th bellator on showtime thank you so much i appreciate it thank you for the time you're very welcome have a great night and that was johnny cupcakes campbell very very good 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 dude with my name being crandall there was always a kid named campbell that was called before me for roll call or attendance <laughs> in school so always know that name campbell well really good east coast dude i like him i like his attitude he's he's a cool character isn't he yeah man 
pretty exciting. Yeah, passionate <laughs> dude. He's ready to bring it. He's ready to drink it. Oh, I wish I would have seen Mint Diggity. Wished him good luck. And I'm sure he appreciates that, Mint. But yeah, so uh, do they have those odds up on that fight yet? I don't think so. I think there's only one uh, Bellator fight. Uh, I don't think they have the odds up for that. Let me check they, though, they real have quick. The, they have for you. So it's Bellator 258. And I think they have only one. There it is. Yeah. They only yeah. have one fight posted, though. The big one, Yoel Romero against Anthony Johnson. And look at that. I knew it. Yoel was favored, and now money is coming in on Rumble. I really, I like Yoel so much. You, I, I think you might have been there with me, or maybe you weren't when I interviewed him. I was. Yeah, person. no, that was that was hilarious, yeah, actually. It, it was great, right? You know, I told him I'm cheering for an over 40 guy. I'm cheering for him representing us over 40. He kind of gave me a hug, and it was like hitting my arms. Like, <laughs> and, you know, so he's a really cool dude. So I hate to cheer against him, but... Uh, but, man, Rumble is a beast. I think this is where Rumble makes a statement that he's ready to rumble with anyone. But on that great card is Johnny Cupcakes Campbell going up against Henry Corrales. Both really good guys. We've had Henry on several times, so I made the best man win in that fight. Both really good guys. So we're actually, uh, whenever you uh, We have a couple more minutes yet, but I just what wanted to go we? ahead and say uh, thank you, everybody, for tuning in here, whether you're on the Fight TV platform or over on YouTube on the Hannibal TV. Make sure to go to the opposite direction and make sure to subscribe to the channels, uh, both of them here, uh, because we will have individual clips put out, uh, additional footage on uh, YouTube over there, but on Fight TV. Um, gotta gotta love it. Gotta love F I T E yep. dot TV. Yep. You can download the app. You can access it from your smart television. It, it's just amazing. Go ahead and yes. get signed up, subscribed over there, and then also make sure for the bonus content to get on the YouTube. It's the Hannibal TV, and uh, you'll see a bunch of wrestling content over there as well. So everybody that's on Fight TV likes that MMA and and the wrestling. That's a great place to go. Also, while you're at it, hit us up on social media. It's at MMA Power Hour across the board. It's at MMA Power Hour. Absolutely. And Triller taking over Fight TV. So you'll be seeing MMA Power Hour in Triller. So I can say for those of you who remember the old classic boxing fight with Muhammad Ali, it's going to be a Triller when you see Colin and Adam for the MMA Power Hour <laughs> well, in Manila. That's our friends for the Philippines. It's going to be the Triller in Manila. <laughs> I mean, I got Snoop Dogg on it, you know. Uh, he's That's one true. of the big guys over here. Snoop, at, at, we may have Snoop on the show because of uh, that. Well, man, who knows? You know? We'll see. We'll have, uh, have, to, have to have Snoop come in and break down. I'll have him come in studio because big, I would like to have fun with that. Oh, yeah, man. I love it. I've been a here. Snoop fan for years. Oh, yeah. The smoke out. It'd be the Colin <laughs> Allen and Snoop smoke out. Gotta love that, man. Just, anyway, just do a whole show called The Smoke That out. would be awesome. Uh, That's it. Get some uh, good green. Go. So we have the, our yeah. uh, next guest. I'll get uh, prepared here. Give me a second get for that. Get up whenever you can, uh, Is there anything you want me to have up on the other screen before um, I pull them on? Yeah, you know, if you want to, you want to, yeah. You go alternate yeah. between them, between yeah, yeah, Rob yeah, yeah. and Cody. Okay. Excellent. So we'll go ahead and uh, get into our Skype dance Let's here Let's do it. Skype dance, baby. And if you haven't bought any of that Ness's Hemp yet, make sure to go on over to mmaph.nesseshemp.com. That's right. That's right. Fully optimized hemp, and you can uh, you can actually uh, be taking some of that fully optimized hemp when you're on the fully optimized uh, MMA Power Hour show. <laughs> Getting it's fully optimized uh, MMA news and reporting. Bum, bum, bum. Skype dance. Two, three, one. There he is. Hello, Cody. Can you hear me? I can hear you. Excellent. All we need to do is have you hit that button uh, that looks like an old movie camera. There you go, brother. Let me give you a proper intro as we are live. Ladies and gentlemen, super happy to have our next guest uh, back on the show. This is one of my Michigan boys. I'm a huge fan, uh, a truly amazing fighter and a great person. We are talking about UFC bantamweight contender, Mr. Cody the Spartan Stamen. Welcome back to the show, Cody. Good to be back. You guys have been well. I appreciate it. We have. I hope you have as well. I know you're splitting up your time between Michigan and Las Vegas, and I think probably leading up to a fight you're in Las Vegas more, or have you officially located to where you're relocated to where you're really pretty much in Las Vegas all year? Yeah, I'm uh, I'm in Vegas 90, 90% of the time. I mean, I go home, I'm, I'll train there, but mostly just vegas uh you know i've kind of built a home base here uh there's just there's a lot of uh a lot of really good resources out here a lot of great training partners and um trying to take advantage of everything i can 
Absolutely. And you, I know you get over to the UFC PI sometimes, and, and then otherwise you're over at where? Extreme Couture or, or Syndicate or what? Do a few practices at Extreme. Uh, I train a lot at 10th Planet. Nice. Uh, I, at my house, I train at. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of stuff at the PI. Yeah, I, I go, you know, I go where uh, the best work is. You know, I try to find the, the best training partners, the best coaching for different aspects of the game. And, and uh, you know, if there's a really hard practice that nobody wants to do, uh, that's the one I'm going to. Love it. Absolutely. And I know that uh, I know that you are that guy 100%. So this is the fight we have coming up here May 1st, only a few weeks away against Marav Dwalish Willie, a fight that I think has been postponed once or postponed twice. Twice, two times, two yeah. times. Yeah, man. So first, first of yeah. all, uh, I actually injured my back. I slipped a disc in my back. Uh, I was out for a couple weeks. Mm -hmm. Um, I tried to get it pushed a couple weeks further back just so I had time to recover and get back in the gym. Um, it just, they couldn't make it happen. And, uh, then in March, Marab got COVID, um, and was pretty sick. So he had to pull out and I had a couple other opponents step up to fight. They ended up getting COVID as well. So, uh, I got left, uh, on the scale with, uh, with no opponent. That's no fun. You know, can you no. tell me, and, and if you want to just keep it secret, you can, but if you show up for a fight and they say your opponent's not cleared and, and he, he has COVID, they give you something, but, I mean, what do they, yeah. just show they, money, they, pretty much show, or do you get your win money, or is that something you don't want to really discuss? No, no, no you, wouldn't, you wouldn't make as much as you would if you got in the cage, um, but they, they, do, uh, they, do, they do compensate you. Okay. Um, obviously, uh, yeah, I mean, the thing about being an athlete is you want to compete, you know, real athletes want to compete. So, um, it doesn't, it's, it's more about the, the time and the effort you put in in preparation for something and not having it. Right. You know, I think it goes way past money at that point. You know, you, you realize how much you kind of yearn to compete. Um, when you know the rug gets pulled off from underneath you without a doubt do you remember in the early days of the ufc uh, maybe not even ufc because they were always the big time but remember the, the early days of mma probably back when you were a kid and you would hear that once in a while a fighter would not make the weight or would not show up and they would actually go to the audience and say does anyone here at this around this weight have any kind of fighting experience and you haven't had too many beers tonight or something. And once in a while they'd find some guy say, yeah, I'll jump in there. You know, like, yeah. <laughs> what I've do you think of that? I've it happen. Um, I've never, I've never personally fought anyone out of the crowd, but I have seen all kinds of, I mean, so when I came up in Michigan, there was no athletic commission. So there was no government, there was no government regulation for amateur fighting. Right. So I, Professional, I could fight somebody that was not the same weight as me. I could fight. I mean, I could fight a bear because there's no governing body to say what can and can't happen. Right. Um, and you know that that's that's the MMA world that I came up in. So, uh, you know, I fought I fought professional fighters within my first five amateur fights. You know, oh, wow. eighteen year old kid doesn't really know what he's doing. Oh man. Um, guys that were you know twenty thirty pounds heavier than me. Uh, I fought twice in one night. I, I mean, as far as MMA goes, I, I came up in the Wild West. I mean, it's obviously evolved significantly since right, then, but right. it's to have those roots, you know. And I was fighting professional fights every, every, you know, amateurs now they can't kick to the head, they can't elbow. Right. And coming up in Michigan, you could do everything. Yep. You could kick, you can knee out of the head. That there was, I mean, the only thing you couldn't do was. Uh, bite them <laughs> like fish hooking like that like, right like the old rules and even if you did bite them there was there was like you, you wouldn't even get disqualified crazy get a point taken away that's definitely the old blood and guts era you know what would you what would you think if in efforts to keep a fight a fight on the card because nowadays with like a dozen fights scheduled for a UFC event. You have so many guys there. Like in each fight, you've got a dozen fights scheduled, right? So that means, let's say you have 24 fighters scheduled. And, and out of the 24 fighters, 
each guy probably has his three corner men and maybe even like one or two of his teammates, you know, sitting, you know, somewhere watching. So that means a lot yep. of people's teammates are there. So like, what would you think if they were to say, hey, we're not going to go over to random fans in the audience, but we're going to go to the corners of these of these 24 fighters and say, are any of you guys fighters that have a winning record that are in this close range and would you want to fight Cody Stamen here like in a half hour? You know, I guess it'd be kind of tough because they'd have to do a lot of contracts, but I guess A, they'd have to get your permission. Do you think anything like that could work or was that just going to be too many problems inherently no, baked into no, that? No, I, I don't think that that would be possible just because you got to think now, uh, one, they would have to have all their medicals done. They would have to have a negative COVID test um they would have to get on the scale and weigh in um i don't i i really don't think anything like that could happen you know at this point in the mma game which is actually a good thing yeah it would be too crazy it'd be ridiculous wouldn't it? it 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 would but i have seen things during covid that have happened that i didn't ever think you would see in the ufc i've seen guys getting signed on 40 hour notices wow. uh, i've seen guys getting signed on 24 hour notices meaning 24 hours before you're going to compete, they call you. Yeah, my medicals Crazy. are done. Yes, I can wait. The next day, you're in the UFC. I mean, I've seen I've seen wow. things like that. That's um, crazy. Which is just which is insane. You, I mean, it's, I don't think you would see that any other time. No, uh, no. So I mean, the, the UFC has has had their hands full. I mean, you got to think the matchmakers are constantly they're working three times as hard because. So many fights fall through because of COVID. I mean, not only that, it's a volatile sport anyways. You know, guys get hurt every day. You know, fights fall through every day. And then you add uh, a pandemic on top of that. I mean, these guys are uh, yeah. working for their money. Yeah, without a doubt. You know, it seems like in the, in the last few cards, things have been pretty good. But it seems like in, um, in March and February and January, every saturday morning someone fell through now let's say you really wanted to watch a card because you either had a teammate on or a friend on or just some bantamweights that you're really excited to watch when when you find out in the morning of that a fight you wanted to watch is off are you kind of as frustrated as the average fan going ah damn it crap or are you kind of more like prepared and expecting that to happen uh, I mean, obviously, I know the inside of the game, so I, I'm not at all surprised. But yeah, I mean, I'm I'm a fan of them, man. It's just like everybody else. I I, en I enjoy watching certain matchups. You know, there's definitely certain fights that I'm looking forward to, and when when they fall apart, you know, I think I have the same the same feeling that everybody else does. Um, and I'm just curious, you know, when they're going to put it back together. I yeah. mean, having been a been on that side of the uh, the curtain, I see I see how easy it can happen i mean really yeah. uh so basically during fight week you're going to take three covid tests you're going to take one when you get there you're going to take one after you uh you'll take one midweek then you'll take one right before the fight and if any of those come back positive uh fights off and the thing is is you know the tests are i think they're like 96 percent accurate so you have like four four percent chance of having a false positive it doesn't matter at that point if right you, if you have no I've seen people that have no symptoms, have no one around them has COVID, people that have been, you know, in the same hotel room with them for a week. Um, they don't have COVID, but somehow someone randomly ends up with COVID. Yeah. And, you know, yeah. chances are that it's a false positive, but yeah, uh, yeah, still f fights are still getting yanked for that. I mean, that's just a liability thing. It's just what they have to do. Yeah. I mean, I, I understand it, but at the same time, you know, it makes it, it makes it exponentially more difficult for, for, everyone to you know i think yeah, was it probably about a month ago so there was a day one day i was uh speaking with my manager um and he was on the phone trying to get things squared away for uh something that i needed to get done mm -hmm. and uh he was like yeah you know I don't, I don't think we're gonna be able to get to it today because they just had six fights fall off today wow six fights fall off in a day oh man you know I mean? And that was for a fight that weekend. I mean, this was like a Tuesday. Six fights. That's half the fight card fell apart. That's crazy. Um, that's so they crazy. have they got to find four guys in the matter of two days, get them medically checked, get them to Vegas, get them 
quarantine, get the COVID. I mean, it's just, it's crazy, yeah. but they're doing it. They're really doing it. I mean, they are, uh, you know, the, the UFC is a, 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 a fine tuned machine at this point. I mean, it's, uh, you know, if you're, if you're one of those guys that's kind of on the edge, like you could possibly be in the UFC, uh, I would suggest you get all your medicals done. Yeah. I would suggest COVID tests every week. Yeah. I would suggest that you're in the gym like you have a fight tomorrow every single day because uh, you never know when that opportunity is going to come knocking. And if yeah. you have a good manager, he's going to tell you the same thing. He's going to tell you, like, hey, listen, you need to be ready. You need to be almost in fight shape at fight weight for the next six months because, you know, if you don't get the opportunity now, they're going to have to sign so many guys on short notice. Yeah. Um, they're going to have a surplus of fighters. So you might not get another opportunity for a year and a half or more. Right. You know, because there's so many guys in the UFC, they're not going to be able to sign more people. Right. Um, and that's where they're, that's where they're getting to now. You know, it's, it's become more competitive because there's so many new people in the UFC. So it's, it's, uh, it's a great opportunity if you're a young guy and you're trying to come up, but it's also, uh, it's added pressure for the guys that are here. It's like, hey, there's 20 guys now that are in the UFC that want to take my spot. Right. Uh, I can't take anything for granted. You know what I mean? Like my, you know what I mean? My my life here can can end at any moment, so I have to do everything right, and I have to be the absolute best athlete I can be at this point um, because you don't have any other options. Absolutely, absolutely, well stated, and I appreciate you giving the good advice to the people that are hoping to get a break and get called up by the UFC. That's cool of you to do. Um, let me ask your opinion on a couple of big bantamweights we've had in the last few weeks that had similar endings. And one of them is your, uh, your coming up opponent, uh, Marab Dewalish Willie's uh, teammate, Aljamain Sterling in that fight against Peter Yan. And then over in one championship, uh, uh, Demetrius Mighty Mouse Johnson against Adriano Marias. So first in the Aljamain Sterling, Peter Yan fight, I mean, Correct me if I'm wrong, but I think even fighters like yourself probably feel everyone's entitled to their own opinion and that maybe that situation is not, there isn't maybe one right answer of how to feel. Uh, or maybe you disagree with that and you feel that, you know, only idiots would not see that this is the answer. But I'm curious what your take on that is, because to me, I thought it was interesting that Habib Nurmagomedov, who was not involved at all, but was there just having finished cornered uh, uh, his his guy, Islam Makachev. And he overheard the uh, Peter Yan corner in Russian saying, you know, like, kick him, knee him, right at the point when Aljo was on his knees. And and then he does, and it, it sure looked like he probably could see that Aljo was, was a downed opponent. And so, therefore... My personal feeling is kind of that the decision was right. And I know a lot of people say, well, make it a no contest. And I'm thinking, like, if you make it a no contest, then we're talking about Ric Flair and wrestling in the 90s where he's losing his match. Now, Peter Yan wasn't losing. I know that. But Ric Flair would be losing his match, and then he'd disqualify himself, and they'd say the champion keeps his belt when he's disqualified. And you're like, but he disqualified himself. How does it change? So my thought would be you kind of have to almost look at that. You know, if you commit a blatant foul and you're the champion in a title fight, you should lose your title. So my feeling was that's kind of I'm okay with how it went down. But what's your thought? And then tell me if you think your thought is – the only thought that anyone should have, or if you could see maybe different sides of the, of the coin. Well, so I, I see there's different sides to this coin. So I, I was illegally needed by Sonia Dong. Um, and he, he got me with a pretty good one. It was right in the first round. And uh, I decided to continue to fight yep. and, it, and I decisively beat the guy yes. and it ended up the fight ended up being a draw. Right. I remember um, hindsight being 2020. Should I have stayed down? Uh, I would have made more money. I would have had a win on my on my uh, my resume in that in that uh, particular in like instance. Um, but from a personal standpoint, I couldn't really live with myself knowing that I could I could get up, I could shake it off, and I could compete. You right. know what I mean? Like right. you can't lie to yourself. You look in the mirror. Yeah. You, you know all your demons. You know what I mean? You can't. 
you can't lie to yourself. You can try, but it, it, it eventually, you know, things start seeping to the top. Um, and then there's another, there's another point to it. You know, like when Anthony Smith was, was neat, neat illegally by John Jones and he decided to continue and he lost, people yeah. gave him shit. They're like, you should have stayed down. Right. Uh, people are giving Aljamain Sterling shit for getting up. Right. Um, so listen, no matter when something like that happens, no matter what takes place, um, people are going to give you shit for it. You know yeah. what I mean? Like that's, that's how it works. Um, the question is, Knowing myself as an athlete, knowing that Elgin Sterling could have gotten up and competed, yeah. I know that. Uh, I've seen boxers dead on the canvas get up in 10 seconds and continue fighting and win. Yeah, um, I've personally been in that situation, so I can shed some light on it. Uh, I've been rocked before. I've been, you know, in in dangerous situations, and uh, I've managed to maintain my composure and go out and continue to to win fights, um, seeing the knee land, knowing where it landed, um, seeing Aljamain's reaction to it. Um, he wasn't fooling me. I knew that he was okay, but I also knew he probably wasn't getting up. I could just tell, yeah. you know what I mean? The way he was acting, he got blinking his eyes. That's not something that you would normally do. Yeah. Uh, you got rocked. Um, there was just, there was a lot of things that were so disingenuous to me that, it, it it really felt um, like he was acting, and you know he's getting a lot of shit for it. I don't need to give him any more shit for it. Right, right. Um, he he is the champ, but is he? Yeah. Can you really sit there and say like you beat the champion, you are the world champion? Right. Uh, I don't. Think one sees it that way. Um, what I think Eljamain did was the but the biggest money grab in his athletic career. Yeah. Eljamain made championship money he will make championship money again yeah granted well i think everyone knew that in that fight peter Jan was going to eventually either take him out or beat him yeah uh now had he gone had he gotten up had he gotten up the scorecards were actually a lot closer than what maybe people thought yeah, yeah that's right that, that round would have been automatic point deduction meaning even if he lost, it would have been a nine-nine round. Oh wow! Um, all he had to do was win one more round in that fight, and he potentially could have taken the world championship right. from Peter. Um, right. And he looked he looked good. I mean, granted, the fight was definitely changing. Didn't wait the first two rounds. Threw a couple hard shots, dropped him. Um, and Peter Young was going to wait until the middle of the fight to, to really put it on Aljo, and that's really what you saw start to happen. Uh, I mean, I don't think Aljamain Sterling was going to win another round, but he could have, and that's what champions do in MMA. Yeah. Um, so if you're asking me, do I think Aljamain Sterling is a man away champion? No, I think Peter Young is the guy to beat. Makes sense. Um, I think when they fight again, I really think Peter Young is absolutely going to kill him. I think he's going to come out a lot differently than he did the first time. Um and uh, you know, beyond beyond Peter Yan, I look at guys like Corey Sanhagen and and some of these other guys that that are um, you know really getting screwed by this whole thing. You know, they're really going to jam up the championship belt for a while. And you know, everyone waiting in the gates, like myself, uh, we're sitting here going, "What the hell? Yeah, what the hell? Yeah, come on, Joe, you're going to sit for nine months after that? Yeah, and you're going to." Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, either got to have an interim title fight. Something has to happen. Yeah. You know, I don't believe the only thing that I would change in that entire situation, I don't believe that you should have a change of hands. I don't believe that you can win the championship belt by disqualification. Right. And I don't I, think right. you can win the fight. Right. Absolutely. You fight. You know what I mean? You, the other guy does something illegal. He gets DQ'd. You win the fight. I do not believe that to be the UFC champion – you have to beat the champion. You cannot win by disqualification. You have yeah. to beat him. Right. So in my, you know, he he shouldn't be the champ. But reality isn't always like what we want. Yeah, so. th this is true. And a question for you: Would you have preferred that the championship be considered vacant after the disqualification, or that Jan kept the t title? Either way, I. Both those are better than the latter. Both those are better than Aljamain Sterling being the champion. 
um, just for the the pure fact that he didn't win it. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like this, we're not talking about. This isn't a, a a fight in the not in the rankings. This is the the most prestigious thing that you can win as an athlete in one of the most talent stacked divisions. Well, I think anyone could argue the most talent stacked division right now in the UFC. I mean, the most talent stacked division the UFC has ever seen. Yeah, 135 now. So, uh, with all that weight, I don't believe that uh, you know he he should be the champ. You know what I mean? I think that. It, Either should be vacant or Peter Jan should be the champ, and then we should we should hash it out from there. They, I mean, they definitely got to fight again. Yeah, absolutely. Now about the the, the comment I made uh, that Habib had told the commentators there that he overheard Jan's corner say knee him and kick him. Do you think that they were saying that pretty much just not knowing and not meaning for him to do that to a downed opponent? They just maybe thought that Aljo was kind of getting up? Or do you think that deliberately Jan's corner would have said kick or knee a downed opponent? Definitely not deliberately. Um, so being having been in the corner in the UFC, the vantage point is terrible. You can't see anything. Like, right. I mean, you're literally... It's like you're like this watching the fight to try to see through the fence. Yeah, if you were underneath your TV looking up at it, like that's literally how it feels. And there's constant blinders. You know what I mean? Like every single place there's a pad in a cage. You're like this as you're watching. Trying to look through the fence and the pads. Yeah, you're like this. You can't see anything. Okay. Sitting, you're sitting at ground level. You know, so you're you're the cage is here. You know what I mean? So you're just your head's pop popping up. You're trying to. Watch yeah. everything. Sometimes you're looking up at the TV. I mean, if his corner didn't have a great vantage point, it could have looked like Aljamain was getting up. And granted, almost everybody gets up in that situation. You know what I mean? You're on your knees. A guy is holding you, but he's not physically holding you down. Most guys get up. Yeah. You know what I mean? And Peter Yan was trying to time when Aljamain got up. Aljamain, being a veteran, being smart, knew that, wasn't going to get up immediately because if he would have he was going to get his head knee off yep and you know peter yan actually lifted el Jermaine's hands off the ground and kneed him in the head thinking that his knee wasn't on the ground right um and i don't think he knew he did anything wrong until uh you know they stopped it i think he just made a mistake there was just a lapse in judgment and it happens i mean things happen really really fighting or fast in a fight i mean in and your emotions are absolutely through the roof. I mean, he's in uh, the third round of a, a insanely uh, fast-paced title fight. I mean, it it happens. You know what I mean? It happens. But you know, I think there should we should just get rid of it. You know what I mean? We if you're hanging out with your knee on the ground mm-hmm. and someone knees you in the head, that's a real fight. You know, in a street fight, that would be legal. Yeah. Uh, I think just take we do one FC rules. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. I see how how many guys are taking knees in fights then. You know what I mean? I think we'll we'll see a different evolution of of MMA at that point. I think that we should adopt the rules that everybody else has. Um that like places like 1FC and other other, you know, places guys won't be able to pull guard. You won't be able to do that whole flirty thing with your hand on the ground. Right. And you can't get knees. Right. Uh that everything, you know what I mean? And not only that, that changes the way the sport it, it people don't want to see guys grappling on the ground for five minutes. You know what I mean? Right. Nobody wants to watch me hug a dude, hold him down, do nothing with it. Um, and I know that. So I know that I can, I'm capable of doing that to guys. I don't do it because I don't think the UFC or the fans would appreciate it. Right. Um, if you take, if you take away the rule that you can't knee or kick a downed opponent to the head, uh, it changes everything. You know what I mean? I can hold a guy down and then I can stand up off him and boot him in the head, uh, just like a real street fight. And, yep. you know, if we want we want to make MMA a little more interesting, that's what we do. Absolutely. I mean, that's what I'd like to see. Yeah, absolutely. I think a lot would. And that's what we saw with the, the, the Mighty Mouse versus Adriano Marias fight. Um, I think a lot of people mistakenly thought somehow that mighty mouse was having flashbacks thinking he was back in the ufc and that there was no needs to a downed opponent i didn't see that at all i think mighty mouse was hurt by that uppercut and yeah he just got need when he was hurt and finished yeah yeah, yeah. i mean uh mighty mouse is a smart guy he 
he uh, he knows the rules. I mean, I don't, and he didn't make any mistakes. He he went out like a like a true champion that he is. Yeah. Um, that you know, bad day at the office, and uh, yeah. I'll come back and, and and get him next time. I mean, yep. listen, Demetrius, guy that you can't help but respect. You know what I mean? Win, loss, or draw. Uh, if you know Demetrius Johnson, uh, you're a fan of that guy. Yeah. You know, he's a he's a great champion. He's a you know, one of the pioneers. I think he's probably the guy that kept the 125 pound division alive and one of the most dominant champions in, in, in history. So, I mean, like when I think of Demetrius Johnson, that's what I think about. Without a doubt. And not only that, but he's fighting, even though they call it flyweight over there at one championship, formerly one FC. I don't know if you knew this, you probably did, but the, the, the divisional name is not reflective of the same weight as in the UFC. Bantam yeah. flyweight is actually bantamweight, so you would be a flyweight over in one championship, and uh, they yeah. don't right, and because they don't have a one twenty five division, so Demetrius is actually fighting bigger guys. Now I know people will say eight ten years ago he fought at bantamweight, but that's because there was no UFC flyweight division. I think you can see he was clearly undersized, excuse me, in that fight, but doesn't mean he can't win it. But he is essentially fighting one weight division heavier uh, than he should. Now, on a positive note, that means a guy like him is probably cutting virtually no weight. So he's fighting fully hydrated and, and, and all that is great. But then he's also fighting bigger guys who are probably outweighing him by seven to 10 pounds on fight day. But it is what it is, right? He's still a great fighter. And I think this Marias is a tough, uh, a tough, tough guy. Um, what would you think if somehow they said in the UFC 135 pound division is done? Anyone that's in bantamweight can weigh up to 145. Would you? Would that make your life a lot happier or easier, or, or are you fine with fighting at 35? Uh, I'd be thrilled. <laughs> I'd be absolutely <laughs> thrilled. Um, 35 is hard. 35 is hard. I mean, uh, yeah. it's it's hard and. You know, the hard part about it is um, I still have to do all the workouts that I I would normally do. Yeah. Um, I still, you know, today I did three workouts, uh, and a couple of them were really hard. Um, and I'm doing it on uh, such a huge calorie deficit. People think that you can just work the weight off, right? right. It just comes off. No. Those workouts, I'm like, I eat whatever you want. I'm like, God, oh, man, I really wish that was true. Yeah, yeah. Yeah percent diet 20 percent working out yeah about what you eat and uh i've been on uh a calorie restricted very clean diet for 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 months now you know so um it's hard it's hard i mean because eating is such a social thing you know what i mean you have friends over you cook you know you got you go out to dinner with people you know i go out to dinner with people i watch them eat because i'm like ah you know i have i have a meal plan in place and i I don't get to go have ice cream. You know what I mean? I don't get to, to go out and have a steak dinner with, with my friends. You know, I have to, I have to be extremely disciplined and as much as people hate cutting weight and they think it's cheating and they think it's this and that, I'm like, well, if, if you understood like how disciplined you have to be to really do this, to do it right, um, I think you'd respect it a lot more. You, you know, cutting weight isn't something that's going to go away. I mean, even if they change the weight classes, even if, even if they make us do hydration tests, like guys are just going to find ways around it. Yeah. Yeah. And still one. Yeah. Added an advantage. Yeah. In the sport, there's just no way wrestling. They do it in wrestling. Anytime there's a, a weight class involved, guys are going to try to get to the lowest weight class so that they could be the biggest guy in the fight. You know, you want to be the biggest dog in the fight. You know what I mean? Cause we all know how to fight. We're all mean. We're all nasty. We can all hurt each other. Uh, wouldn't it be nice if I could go in there on the fight day and be a little bit bigger than that guy? Yep. Um, you know, so uh, cutting weight's not going away. Um, it's a pipe dream. I would love it if it did, but uh, the reality is I have to be a very disciplined human if I want to do this uh, as a profession. And, you know, I, I love this job. I, uh, I have no problem with it.
Absolutely, and you do a great job at it, man. You're a great fighter. We've got only about three minutes or so left with you, Cody, so I'll throw you some uh, quick questions here. First, one of our big fans, I think, from Scotland or the Scottish background, Shinta, is asking me for my prediction for Cody versus uh, Marab, the machine, Dwalish Willie. Uh, I'm definitely going to pick Cody. I believe in Cody. I think this is going to be an amazing fight. I think Cody can win by either a late-round stoppage or a points victory uh so that is my personal prediction cody this is an interesting interesting fight you guys are supposed to be fight two other times so you probably know each other better than any two guys who have never fought each other because you were supposed to fight yeah. twice right this is like it's like this is like collegiate d1 wrestling versus almost like a dagestani habib type of wrestling even though i know marab is from a, a neighboring country so not right there with habib but that russian sambo and and marab is almost kind of like created like this berserker mode where he's like kind of berserker habib he's just going berserker mode for your legs to get that takedown and <laughs> just keep coming and he's an interesting dude but what do you what's your thought in that matchup man that's you know both of you guys probably have never faced anyone like each other so it's not just you facing you know crazy marab that you've never seen he's never seen anyone like you but what do you think in a matchup for a guy like marab i, I what are your feelings about what he brings and 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 what uh what we should look for in that fight that i think uh could be interesting i mean so for years for years for years and years and years the russians they were the guys to beat in wrestling they were the best wrestlers yep but we've evolved the yep. usa is now to beat um so it's it's usa wrestling versus uh dagestani russian georgian wrestling right um i know what i'm getting into i am fully prepared for marab and whatever the hell he brings you know what i mean i am the more skilled guy i am the more i'm much more finesse uh my techniques are cleaner uh everything i do is sharper it's harder uh you know, it's not sloppy. You know, I look at Marab like he is a tenacious dude. He is all balls, and he is sloppy, sloppy. He makes mistakes in there, and he's been able to make those mistakes because he's never fought anybody at the top of this division. Right. You know what I mean, he fought he fought a forty year old Don, John Dodson, the twenty five pounder. Right. That is his win. I've been fighting Aljamain Sterling. I've been fighting the top guys in this division for most of my USC career. Yep. I have one fight. My only, my first fight was the only fight I had outside of the top 15, you know? So I have had killer after killer, after killer, after killer. Marab is no different. You know what I mean? Every single hype train that I come against, I don't know what it is, man. I'm like, uh, I'm like the, uh, I'm like the stake on the track. You know what I mean? Like when the train tries to go over me, it derails. It happens every time. I've destroyed some really, really promising careers, and uh, I don't think Marabs is going to be any different. I mean, yep. he could have fought anybody, and he probably could have out-wrestled them, but I'm the guy that he can't out-wrestle, and right. that's uh, that's – the truth yeah absolutely and i think you have better hands i think your power and your striking is more polished than his uh they've got him odds makers have him as an almost two to one favorite uh but then odds makers seem like are wrong every single week on on a lot of fights and as as a right i'm sure you could realize it's just more money for you and your friends to win if you decide to bet you know but and then late money might come in on you they say the the smart money are guys that wait until like maybe after the weigh-ins you know, uh, speaking of which, I don't think either of you guys are known to be trying to like mad dog too many people on the weigh-ins. Uh, but do uh, you, you think that'll happen here? Is there any bad blood? Are you guys both so frustrated because of both fights uh, being canceled that we might see you guys trying to get a little bit, uh, a little bit intense in the in the stare downs? Or what do you think? Uh, there's no, there's. I mean, right now there's no personal bad blood. Um, but I think if we're at uh, here's this interview or any of the inter other interviews I've been doing. I think he might be a little pissed off. I mean, I would love to see yeah. the the creature come out. I want him to bring his best. You know, yeah. I want to see the best crab that's ever set foot in that cage because I don't really think it matters. Makes sense. Um, as far as the odds makers go, I mean, I've been an underdog five out of the six of fights I've won. So um, I got a pretty good record as an underdog. That's true. Last question for you. Marab wears the same 
like like traditional ceremonial head dress type of thing as Habib, except Habib's is blonde and Marab's is dark black, like dark hair. Do you think Habib looks at black. that? Yeah, if you ever noticed that, it's the same thing that Habib wears, except yeah, it's dark, like black or brown. Do you think that Habib looks at that and says, "Dude, you're you're copying me wearing that that same thing," or do you think uh, he probably has respect for Marab just from a similar part of the world wearing his own uh, head headgear like that? I think there's probably some cultural things that we don't understand. Um, it might be just just based on where they're from. Uh, I don't want to get into that because I feel like that. You know what I mean? We could be, yeah. Uh, we don't want to shitty just... culture. Do it. I don't understand. I don't understand the headpiece, but I was thinking about maybe putting like a black afro on it. With <laughs> <laughs> that would be hilarious. And then, like you said, though, you may he may feel that's really <laughs> disrespectful. He may be really pissed, but that would be hilarious. You never know, though, man. He, he seems like a guy who's got a sense of humor, Rob. You know what I mean? And not that you're caring yeah. whether he does or not, but. When people from other countries mock their country, you know what I mean? Yeah. I feel like the Georgian people are very, very prideful. Yeah. And uh, you know, they I don't think they take too kindly to that. Probably not. Um, you, yeah, you might you might be the heel immediately <laughs> right there if you did that. I mean, I'm I'm Team USA, so I don't really care. Yep, I'm with you, brother. Well, I'm with you 100%. Can't wait to see this fight. This is May 1st in the UFC. Uh, Cody, the Spartan Stamen against Marab. Dwalish Willie, uh, Cody, I know you can do it, man. Kate, can't wait to see you go out there representing uh, Michigan and the USA and uh, taking home that W, and uh, we'll be cheering for you. Thank you so much for your time, as always, brother. Really appreciate you. Of course. Thank you, guys. Have a great night. You too. Cody the Spartan Stamen. That was a great one. I, that would be amazing if he came out with like <laughs> a black afro like oh. and Marab has that. <laughs> oh no. That would be classic. That would uh, be classic. He was holding back and he decided to just let go. Hell yeah. That oh was, my God. That was got to do it. That would, After it'd, it'd, big news, we that, know people are tuning in here on Fight TV. That would be uh, something. <laughs> and then you know what he could do? Like, remember Habib, like seven or eight years ago, put his headgear. Uh, that head thing on uh, Joe Rogan's head. Uh, that, it, it, Joe was the one who was like interviewing. They put that on Joe's head. That was tough. Anyway, we don't want to be late for this next. Well, game. I no, we don't. Uh, we've got to go ahead and thank you all for tuning in to another episode of MMA Power Hour. This is our ninth season. We didn't even take a break this uh, between seasons. We're on episode four, going into episode five next week. Uh, not sure who our guests are for next week, but uh, right now you can expect an amazing guest or two or three, just like this week. Uh, thank you so much. Make sure to go on over to our social media. Uh, it's at MMA Power Hour. Give us likes, comments, shares. That's what helps get the word out. Also, if you're over on Fight TV, make sure to get on over to YouTube and check out the Hannibal TV. Subscribe there. If you're on the Hannibal TV on YouTube, make sure to head on over to the Fight TV. Subscribe there. We want you guys everywhere helping get word out because we can't do it without you guys. Also, we can't be doing this without our amazing partners, uh, Nessus Hemp and my or it's Mocha Tribe. But you go to mymochatribe.com to get yourself the coffee over there. It's the best coffee you'll ever find. They actually have CBD infused coffee as well. Uh, you don't get the crash but you do get the energy and also head on over to Nessus Hemp it's mmaph.nessushemp.com to get yourself the biggest discount on the market for the highest quality CBDA hemp oil out there absolutely and for my Canadian friends it's CBDA a <laughs> <laughs> anyway, while Dr. Adam Ward is getting queued up for this next guest, I want to thank Lucas Baca and Shintoff for the nice comments mentioning as a great interview and an awesome show. We really appreciate you guys. That means a lot uh, to to Dr. Adam Ward and, and me personally to hear that. Thank you. I really do my best thank to you. Entertain, you, entertain you guys, and as does Adam. Yeah. And so whenever you're ready, Doc, with a Skype dance. So this time I think I'll do the Jens Pulver version of the Skype dance. Join in. Skype yeah. dance. Jens Pulver Skype dance. Uh oh, this might have jinxed us. There's, maybe we go back to the regular Skype dance. <laughs> Skype dance. <laughs> We're trying. Let's see what happened. Where's the... Do I... Just start beatboxing with it. Oh, here we go. Yeah. We gotta do something. So let's see if there's any message or something about any problem with uh, with uh, our guest. Funny. I don't think so. I yeah. wonder if she's Skype changed her... All day. 
You know, I wonder if she's changed. Do you see her on by any chance? As she is on. Huh. Uh. But I, I don't know what's going on. So. Well, I... well, well, oh, she's calling. She's trying ah, now. There we go. Hey, Miranda, are you there? I am here. Awesome. I appreciate you a lot. All we need you to do is hit that video, and you already did. Fabulous. So we are live, Miranda, as usual, and we're going to give you a proper introduction, and we'll be off and running. Ladies and gentlemen, so excited to have this next guest back on the show. She just keeps killing it uh, in the UFC with a huge fight coming up uh, in a couple months against Macy Barber. We are talking about the woman they call Miranda Fear the Maverick. Miranda Maverick, thanks so much for coming back on the show. Yeah, no problem. Thank you. My hair's all messy. I just got done with jujitsu class. Not a problem. I know personally that's how jujitsu uh, can uh, make your hair look. And uh, yours doesn't look bad compared to how mine and some other people <laughs> would look. So absolutely. But you are a blonde now, but you've been kind of a blonde. But are you a little bit lighter than usual now? A little bit lighter than usual. I dyed my hair before, uh, a little ways before Jillian's fight, I guess, right before we had our first fight scheduled. Um, it used to be a little bit darker, um, but still tried to keep it pretty natural. First time I ever dyed my hair. <laughs> I like it. I like it. You know what I was thinking? You're from Missouri. Is the grocery store near you Schnooks? Um, I don't remember a Schnooks in Missouri. They're not. I think I could swear it was in the St. Louis area, but you're not really near St. Louis, are you? Yeah, I'm not St. Louis. I'm about three hours from there, so they might be up there. I've definitely used the word schnook and schmook of people, but not, uh, <laughs> not the supermarket, right? I saw because I had an ex girlfriend that used to go to that store, then I heard a comedian throw that out because I was thinking, like, if people recognize you, where, where is the most unusual place that someone's recognized you in Missouri, or are they not quite big UFC fans enough yet and it hasn't happened? I bet you it has happened. Well, I'm not sure about Missouri. I'm living in Virginia now. That's right. That's uh, right. Uh, in Virginia, I've had somebody recognize me in Walmart, actually, right after my first UFC fight. I didn't have any identifying clothing on. I had a mask on. It was just a plain, you know, medical mask. And I had my hair down. Huh. And some tapped me on the shoulder and was like, Miranda Maverick? And I got creeped out, you know. <laughs> in the middle of Walmart. It was, it was, and I was like, Yes. Yeah, yeah, asked, I... you know? And he was like, Oh, I just I saw your fight. Wanted to congratulate you. And I was like, Do you mind if I ask how you recognize me? Yeah, like, what the heck? Like your hair, your hair's all fluffy. You got a white girl afro, is what he called it. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> It's, I was like, thanks, I guess. Yeah, it's funny, too, because that's got to be something that I can imagine uh, would take getting used to. Because normally, if you're not in the public light, someone coming over to you and saying they know you, you're kind of like, how do you know me? What is this? What are you trying to talk about? But, you know, right. where, where you're at, and you'll start seeing it, I think, as you keep on doing well, is people will recognize you as someone they cheered for, as a fighter they saw. They don't want anything from you. They're not trying to do anything to you except for to be like hey it's you you know and that's got to be something yeah. right at first cool. it's kind of weird but it's kind of cool after all isn't it yeah at first it was weird now it, it, it's gotten cool and there's times where it's annoying almost or i wish that the light wasn't on me you know right um like there's been other people's celebrations i'll be at and i become like almost the center of attention which i feel bad about right but then i'll be at a restaurant eating sometimes and i'll have people that are like Miranda Maverick, and they end up getting excited, people excited around them, which is always funny. I joke that if I went up to somebody else and just shook them and was like, oh my gosh, John Smith, you know, <laughs> and whoa, who's he? <laughs> like, that's funny. Out who it is, you know, so sometimes it's just the hype that's around you if one person uh, notices, but it is exciting. It's inspiring, especially like when little kids come up and want pictures or even adults come up and are like, oh, wow, you know, good job on your fight, so. Yeah, it's fun. That's cool. That's got to be. And it seems like, you know, you being a Midwesterner, you know, you would be really gracious, you know, for that. And, and I would imagine, like, at some points, maybe, you know, someone could actually come up, like, if you're even having dinner or lunch with a, a friend and interrupt your, your – I would imagine you would probably still be friendly. I mean, obviously, if someone's super oh, rude and literally okay. grabs you, maybe not. But as long yeah, as they're not, right? You know I've ever felt like I need to be rude. There's like the first instant reaction if somebody like touches me in the middle of a store. Um, but yeah, I'm super nice with it. I don't mind it at all. It's just like 
you know, you have meet and greets and stuff. I think it's even more special when it's out there in the middle and you're not recognized and they recognize you anyway, you know, makes you feel special, I guess. Absolutely. Well, you deserve it. And speaking of meet and greets, is there one that was just missed yesterday or today or is it coming up in a few days? It's coming up in a few weeks, actually. Tell us where so, and when. Yeah. Yeah, I have a meet and greet in St. Roberts, Missouri at the Cracker Barrel there. I have a meet and greet at the Cracker Barrel in Springfield, Missouri. And then I have a seminar that I'm getting ready to do at Burn Fit Athletics in Suffolk, Virginia. And I should have a seminar in Springfield, Missouri as well at Springfield Fight Club, what used to be my home gym. Excellent. And for if people wanted to find out more information, what's the best social media place for people to hit you up to find out more about this? Instagram for sure. It's at fear the maverick underscore H O M T or just look up my name, Miranda Maverick. It'll pop up pretty easy. Nice. Now you being a Missouri girl, let me see if you know the answer to this. And I know you're pretty young at 23, but my producer Adam, although he grew up in Iowa, he spent several years in Missouri. He was living in a city in Missouri that what the heck was it most known for windows making windows or something oh it's an oh that place was in iowa okay well she wouldn't know then okay he <laughs> he was from but where well he lives somewhere near near springfield in missouri where, where were you lake of the ozarks did you ever spend any time there yeah, yeah um, uh, so the place where my dad's ranch is is between the lake of the ozarks lebanon bolivar and springfield missouri we're basically right in the middle of that in a little bitty town that he might have heard of called Tunis, Missouri. It's where all the Mennonites live and the little uh, Mennonite shops and stuff and um, auction is every year. Yep, he's nodding his head and gives a thumbs up. Yeah, yep. He, yep. Lead mine area, people know it for that too. There's like a, it's called Lead Mine. It's got a old shooting range there and a bunch of horse trails and stuff. So it's actually a pretty popular spot for tourists and things like that to come. And so they cross our farm a lot and they'll always stop and take pictures at our ranch um, we have a big entrance way with a bunch of decorations on it so people are always stopping and taking pictures of the metal artwork very cool now let me yeah. ask you maverick is a unique last name are there many people named that and is there an origin for that or is that like a shortened change name like many of us might have from like a longer foreign name or something um, I'm really not sure about the actual history of it. I know it originated from Texas, mm -hmm. um, you know, stereotypically, of course. Right. Um, but the meaning of it, I know, is like it started out as like a cow that strayed and wandered, and now it stands for more of like an independent person and things. But I'm blessed to have the name. I don't really know where it comes from aside from that. Very cool. Well, let's talk about this matchup. I think it was either the first time we had you on or the second um, that we you mentioned that you do think Macy Barber was someone you would see down the line. And I guess down the line came pretty quick because here we yeah. are, right? July 24th. And just like fighters are learning to fear the Maverick, matchmakers are learning to respect the Maverick and have you as the favorite. Uh, once again, almost two to one. Wow. Yep. Looked yet. <laughs> yep. They have the minus one, approximately minus 170 to 175 on you and something like plus. Uh, similar amount or plus two 150 or 190 something i forget what the comeback is on macy but this is an interesting interesting matchup because both of you are really young i think you're like 10 months older than her or eight months or something um one of the things that i that is different is that she came into the ufc talking trash right out of the gate like right out of the gate, she was talking smack to everyone. And it, I guess, you know, it brought a lot of attention around her. She did well at first. She was talking mad trash about going to be the youngest <laughs> champion other than John Jones. And I do think that, you know, good for her for helping to hype herself up. You, I guess you kind of maybe to an extent have to do that. And it certainly can't hurt. But it did get her some haters. It did get her a bunch of people saying, I wish this little chick would shut the hell up. Up, you know about all this right and then eventually when she did get shut up by other girls in the cage a lot of people were kind of celebrating that good we don't have to hear from macy barber's mouth 
you know anymore right. right and so i think maybe now the people are like not so mad at her anymore and it's almost like okay what's she gonna do now but you know one thing that is kind of for sure her back is kind of a little bit against the wall although i know that in the women's divisions they want to give women maybe a little bit more than that uh, of a chance than some guys a lot of the guys in these stack divisions three fights you're out for sure three losses and I think some women they're maybe giving four, but maybe not. Either way, she's got two. I know she kind of sometimes likes to explain away her loss against Roxanne Modafferi, and I know her knee gave out, right, which I guess is a problem. But you could say that Sean, um, Sean uh, O'Malley says his foot gave out when it was because of low leg kicks delivered by Chito Vera and then being grounded and pounded out of there. So it wasn't a ghost that beat Sean O'Malley, right? And it really, I think, wasn't a ghost uh, and her knee that, that was taking the form of Roxanne Modafferi to beat her. Nevertheless, though, she came back and she did fight a very tough Alexa, Alexa Grasso. And I'm sure you feel as most of us do that Alexa's a pretty talented fighter it's kind of interesting how it seemed like she was like a buddy with Dana White yet right after she loses they kind of throw her right in the fire against another girl who beats her and now they're throwing her in the fire again against another girl who's probably going to beat her so it's almost like some people will say what's the UFC's motive for this match right, right? and then some people well I've read say it's to get rid of Macy Barber out of the organization. I don't know. What's your thoughts on all this? One, you said a lot of stuff, so I'm going to try to address them. Yes. Um, first, Macy with, um, you know, being kind of self-righteous, being all um, showy with her talking and stuff. I don't blame her one bit for that. She had to get her name out there. Look, everybody's talking about her. Mm -hmm. Hate or like, whatever. She's got followers. She's got fans. Um, she's got a lot of eyeballs on her as a result. She's had two losses, and there's still a lot of people behind her and still a lot of people talking about her in general. Um, so I respect that. Everybody has their different way of getting famous, and hers worked for her. That's great. Um, she hasn't said anything bad to me yet. Um, so I don't mind if she does or doesn't. You know, It doesn't affect the outcome of what's going to happen, and it's not going to affect my attitude going into it. In fact, the more shit talk that's given to me, the more motivation. Um, let's see. The other side of things, the men who get kicked out of the UFC before the women as far as their losses. One, there's a lot more competition for men out there. You kick out a woman, it's kind of hard to fill that gap. Yeah, there's not right. that many women there of high skill. Um, not to be mean to a lot of women, there just aren't as many women in the sport in general. To where the men, there's like 20 biting at the bit every day to get into the UFC, you know? Agreed. Um, women so much, maybe a couple, you know, that are available every once in a while that are of the quality they want to take those fights. Um, so... I don't think Macy, even if she loses this one, is going to get out of the UFC. I don't think Jillian's going to be kicked out of the UFC on a three-fight or on a two-fight losing streak, you know. And the whole idea of, well, this is Macy's last time. She's still super young. She's still got a lot of potential ahead of her. Um, I don't think that'd be smart by the UFC or by fans to talk about in that way. Yeah, I agree. And I didn't mean any disrespect to Macy Barbaro, just kind of echoing no. some of the thoughts out no, there. No, I'm just what, what I think about that, though. And then as far as putting her against me, I, I actually do think it's a stupid matchup. Not necessarily because it's against me, but I was actually thinking that me and Macy would meet in the cage. But I thought it should be down the road a little bit. Let her work herself up to fourth, fifth. Let me work myself up to fourth, fifth. Right. Then us fight. Kind of a, I wouldn't say money fight, but it's an attention fight. Like a lot of people wanted to see this fight. Um, you know, it's two women. We're going against each other. We're both super young. We're these prospects coming into the sport. And they're kind of wasting the hype that they could have waited for when we both had a little bit bigger followings, especially myself. Um, but, you know, I, I love it. I love it. It's getting me a lot of attention quick. Um, a lot of people say they're throwing me into the fire. Um, I see it the opposite, kind of like you said. But, hey, tough fights are tough fights for both of us. She's 14th. I'm 15th ranked in the world right now. Mm -hmm. And it's time to see who moves up one more chain of the ladder. Absolutely. Absolutely. So well stated. And I appreciate that. We got a compliment by one of our fans, the two beast, and he is, is noticing that you're getting out there so that people can get to know you. A lot of fighters seem to be missing the boat in doing any promotion. So uh, he actually wanted to let you know that he loves how you get out there and do interviews. 
Thank you. I appreciate it. I try to honestly take every interview that comes. I have some people that are kind of rude in the inboxes, like oh, no. I won't get back to it right. days or whatever. Right. Uh, but you got to understand, I probably have 10 people per day asking me to do interviews, and I'm a very busy person. I have school. I have training I'm doing. I have life, and I, I'm getting a job, too, within the next week. So it's just it's hard to keep up, you know, especially with interviews when I – don't know them or I look and they have 200 followers like honestly I'd still love to do it with them I don't care about that so much obviously right. I like the exposure but I like people getting to know me and everybody having their shot um, but yeah it's just hard to keep up with all of it but thank you thank you for that without a doubt to beast she appreciates that comment and uh, Miranda we appreciate you being on with us we've always uh, respected you from the beginning and we appreciate you staying with us because you're blowing up we're blowing up we just found out that uh, fight TV our distributor got uh, purchased by Triller. And you know, Triller is the company that put on Mike Tyson versus Roy Jones. They're putting on Ben Askren versus Jake Paul, right? And so they're, okay. yeah, they're getting some traction. So we will be getting an even, even bigger audience being that we'll be able to say we're uh, one of the regular programs on Triller. So yeah, we're rocking, we're happy. And then another good comment here from one of uh, our fans in, uh, regarding you, Miranda. And he says, easy win against Macy. So, you know, you got, you got some support here and uh, we really appreciate you. So I, I have got some interesting questions. I know we are making sure we stay within a half hour. So that leaves us about seven more minutes. I approximately, I think, or eight, something like that. Let me see. We started at 725. Uh, actually, about 10 more minutes. We got about 10 minutes. I think. Yeah. Cool. So, so much to ask. So one thing I was thinking about is that you're only 23 years old yet you, you're so composed you're you're also going to school to get a doctorate so that means obviously you've got a really good mind you're really a uh you know cerebral person and um and so what do you attribute that to this ability to to kind of be mature beyond your years and does it always come through or are there ever sometimes at 23 years old, like in the UFC, when you're out there, it's that you say to yourself, oh crap, I'm a 23 year old kid. What the hell am I doing <laughs> out here? Love to hear your thoughts. Age has never really been a barrier for me. It's always kind of made me mad growing up when people, you know, even at nine, at, at 12, at 15, when people are like, you should calm down. You should enjoy your childhood. You should focus on this. You should focus on that. And the older I get, the more I realize that adults don't have it all figured out either. Right. You know, they don't they don't know what's going on um, and to let me do my own thing. Um, I've always been fairly advanced, whether it be in academics or just ambitious wise, trying to get things done. And I'm not trying to be braggadocious or whatever you want to say that is. But I credit a lot of that to how I was raised. Um, my dad focused a lot on. Uh, work ethic and teaching us to work hard and also to give us this faith background. You know, I mm -hmm. believe in God. I'm a big Christian. Mm -hmm. And I think as long as you believe in that and, and work hard to meet the goals that you pray about and ask about and try to reach and set the, not only have the insight and the vision to see it, but also set like little goals ahead of you. You can't just be like, oh, I want to make it to the UFC and then sit on your ass. That's not going to happen. you got to get in the gym and try as hard as you can to make those dreams come true. They're not going to come true. And so that's what I've kind of done in every aspect of my life. And if anything, I feel like my biggest flaw or my biggest problem is not being able to say no, mm -hmm. um, whether that be, oh, yeah, I've got time to help you with this or, yeah, I've got time to tutor people, too. That's an extra this much money or I've got time to do private lessons like right. just the ads up that I see is in my benefit or in the benefit of others. So I try my best to fit it in my schedule. And a lot of times that has came to a detriment. So that's where my, I guess, immaturity or inability to see the full scope of things has hurt me before, um, but never really in a fight. There's never been a question of, oh, I'm so young, like, I don't know if I should be here. There have been times where I'm like, oh, I'm nervous, but that's as far as it's went, like the reality had to hit. Like my fight against Liana, for instance, that was the first time, one, that I got to fight a girl that was pretty young. Mm -hmm. um, actually, all my fights in the UFC now are going to be against younger girls than I've ever faced in the past, which is pretty cool. Yeah. Uh, but when I got in there against Liana, everything was never real. I got signed to the UFC back last June. I had my eye surgery, which was super unfortunate, and my debut got delayed. 
Um, then I had it set up with Liana and had the pictures, had media day, had training, the weight cut, all that. But it never really hit that I was in the UFC. It never hit that that dream was true until Bruce Buffer called my name. And I remember my heart just like skipping a beat, you know, like it was just unreal. Nice. And so that first 30 seconds or so of the fight, I was just kind of flustered. I don't think I showed it. Like nobody would be able to see that I was flustered, but my timing was off. My rhythm was off. I got hit more than I've ever been fit, hit cumulatively in a whole fight usually in that first 30 seconds. And then I, I snapped to it and I got what I needed to do done. Um, but that's one of the only times I felt nervous since my uh, like second pro fight, I would say. Nice. Now, for July 24th against Macy Barber, would you have you heard anything? Is that going to be a fight with fans in attendance or not? Um, actually, have no idea about that. They they're supposed to be in contact with me about it right now. They don't know the place. They don't right. know about the fans. Nothing. I don't have any information extra from what normal fans know. Would it matter to you either way? Or would you prefer uh, one no. or the other? I, I would prefer a crowd there. One, I would love my family to actually be able to come watch me fight. You know, it's been almost two full years since my whole family's gotten to see me. Um, and even then, my mom missed a couple of them. Uh, my dad's been there for most, you know, except the Abu Dhabi one. Um, he's always in my corner. But, yeah, I'd like to have not only that, but I'd also like to be able to have a training partner to come into my come into my room and train with me but all the COVID restrictions i usually only get to bring my two coaches and my dad and that's it gotcha absolutely all right with six minutes or so left i got a couple of big questions for you first okay. is going to be right uh regarding your upcoming fight and then i want to definitely get your opinion on the big women's flyweight title fight so maybe let's do maybe like a couple minutes on the first uh, or two or three okay. and then two or three months later okay macy barber uh two questions uh together here one do you think uh has there been any trash well i think you said there hasn't been any trash talk yet do you think she's going to try to intimidate you at all in any way like in the stare downs of the weigh-ins and if so well what what are your thoughts and then the second is what kind of a challenge do you think she brings uh how do you expect that fight to play out uh, I do assume she's going to try to intimidate me or say something. I joke about the whole dad thing. You know, her dad's always in her corner. My dad's in mine. Nice. I'm like, I guess I started the trash talk. I'm like, I think the Maverick duo is going to win this one. You know, I think I I've it. got the better dad, the better whole fight team with me. Um, so I guess I started that one. But I'm sure she'll try to intimidate me or whatever. But I'm not very intimidatable. I'll just laugh at it. I think nice. it's hilarious. And it also just gives me more motivation to go in there and whoop a girl's ass. Nice. Um, secondly... What was the second part? I'm sorry. Uh, second thing is, how do you think that fight's going to play out? I, I have a feeling like her thought is she's probably going to hope to keep it on the feet and just piece you up really quick. What do yeah. you expect from her? Yeah, she doesn't piece people up. She kind of just throws her hands. That's but true. I'll be honest. <laughs> Good. About the game planning, just because if she's smart enough to go watch interviews and stuff like right. I am of her, then she'll get some knowledge yep i agree no need to, to divulge that i agree okay in the last uh four minutes here let's talk about this big title fight i'm really excited to have you uh break this down for me uh not just predict a winner and and if you can't predict a winner i'm okay with that but love to hear the miranda maverick breakdown uh valentina the, the bullet shevchenko against uh jessica andraj the uh, pile driver bata astaka i think now she makes me excited about possibly a matchup with you both could be exciting but jessica andrage is known as the beastly strong girl that's just big sistered so many other girls and i think that 125 is her division right so that would be pretty interesting your farm girl strength against her beastly brazilian strength uh someday but tell us how do you think the fight plays out between those two and uh just a couple what about four minutes three four minutes left uh give me your yeah. thoughts as, as long as you want to go okay. on that first off the whole fight between me and her potentially my dad and i have actually discussed that and we think as far as build wise as far as fight style they are pretty similar right um i'd love that one day but her and valentina um, I'm going to predict Valentina. I think unless Andrade happens to by fluke hit her and catch her, um, she's going to lose just on technicalities. I think Valentina's a little bit too fast for Andrade. And Andrade, when she gets flustered, just starts swinging. And Valentina is known for capitalizing on that, you know, whether it be a head kick, whether it be submissions, whatever it is. Andrade is good on the ground. So if she has a good game plan, 
um, you know, whether it be to hold Valentina on the ground like Jennifer Maya attempted to do mm -hmm. or hold her against the cage and manage to get her on the ground. She might be able to make it go to a decision, but if it's in stand-up and she's trying to just bang with Valentina, which I have a feeling she's going to try to do that, she tries to do that with too many girls, um, she may or may not get knocked out pretty quickly. Gotcha. Um, she's only had one flyweight fight. I'm sorry to interrupt you. Go ahead. Yeah. No, you're fine. Which one was it against who? Uh, Dr. Adamorta, can you pull it up? Because I actually had forgotten, and I'm going to have my guy pull it up. Uh, Je Jessica Andraj, A N D R A D E. I am. I'm. I'm curious because it happened only a couple of months ago. And remember, I don't know if you do, but you probably do. Remember, this was a girl, Jessica Andraj, who was at bantamweight for like three or four years. She was a really I short bantamweight, right? Yeah. <laughs> really jumped weights i think she might have even had a fight as an amateur or something 145 but right she at 35 then she had 15 right she's wrecking house at 115 yeah. you know too like she's not in the title contention right this second um like her versus rose was incredible fight to me right but her now go ahead no go ahead cool sorry to okay i found out who it was i'm excited to tell you sorry to step in your words so she had her one flyweight fight october 17th where she just burnt through Caitlin Chukagian with body shots. Uh, that's, yeah, that's right. And so here's what my thought is. The only reason she dropped from bantamweight to strawweight was there was no flyweight division. This was a girl who always should have been a flyweight. The fact that she mm -hmm. made bantamweight was crazy, but she was crazy strong against those girls there, but she also was sometimes really depleted. And the way she came in, and I predicted that, I bet a little bit of money on that. I just felt this is her weight. I felt she was going to just crush Caitlin Chukagian. And she did. She just went in there like this was her weight class. And so, right? So I think that a lot of the mistakes that she was making or, or, or some of her weak points at straw weight may not be in play as much here at fly weight. Um, you know, but then I'm only saying that, I guess, off of one fight against, uh, against, uh, Chukagian. So it might be, but I think this is a good weight for her. Don't you think? I definitely think it's where she should stay. Yes, it is a good weight for her. I kind of was on the same mindset. Um, when I first started in Invicta, I wanted to be a straw weight because the UFC had straw weights and I wanted to get into the UFC eventually. Um, but ended up being a very big struggle for me to make straw weight. So went to flyweight and then of course flyweight division came just a few months after I had my first flyweight fight as a pro. Yep. So that was nice. Absolutely. But yes, I think she has a lot of power there. And Caitlin Chukagian is also a fight that I would want fairly soon, honestly. If I if I win this Macy one, um, I've always said I'd like to go against somebody that has that striking background a little bit more. Awesome. I think that would be amazing. Well, I can't wait to see this fight. Uh, one of our fans, by the way, actually just said they love you. So you're getting a lot of support here. We love it. Appreciate you here too, Miranda. And I thank you so much. Can't wait. July 24th, UFC against Macy Barber. Uh, can't wait to see you back in action. And uh, it's always a pleasure chatting with you. You're always so gracious and friendly. And uh, I'm just super excited about your future with the maturity you have at 23 years old. Um, you're a unique person. So I want to thank you so much again for taking the time to jump on with us here at the MMA Power Hour. Thank you. I appreciate you having me. Hope to be on soon again. Absolutely. You take care of yourself, huh? Thank you. You too. Thanks. Bye-bye. Bye. Miranda Maverick like that girl. What a personable uh, woman she is. Personable, and fun. Uh, just sharp. <laughs> badass fighter. Mature. She's amazing, yeah. <laughs> yeah never, never leave out the fact she is a badass fighter. She and really is. That's Midwest. why we've got a lot of this fan support jumping in here on YouTube for her, and that's just absolutely amazing. And speaking of fan support, you guys are the reason that this show is going. We appreciate the tips here, Two Beast, and anybody else that ever wants to throw the tips out in the future do it do we it now if you it. want as well we appreciate it uh, so. and that's for those of you on youtube for those of you on fight tv head on over to youtube every now and then and, and uh give us a tip over there we'll answer questions when you ask them with tips especially uh but you guys are all amazing also make sure when you check out the uh, fight this weekend the boxing a match between jake paul and ben Askren over on fight tv it's f-i-t-e dot tv when you're checking it out over there on the fight tv app make sure you also go and click subscribe to the mma power hour channel over there uh help build us up a little bit 
We love you guys. You guys are amazing. Colin, this was another amazing episode. Thank you to the guests. And for this week, I'm tapping out. Absolutely. Let me see if I can wrap this up before the feed is cut off. I've got three minutes or less, and I'm going to aim for two. Dr. Adam Warda, thank you for everything you do. It's amazing. Really appreciate it. In order of appearance, thank you so much to Johnny Cupcakes uh, Campbell. And really appreciate your appearance brother for the first time uh thank you to cody the spartan stamen thank you brother from coming for coming back to talk to us and thank you so much miranda maverick as well really appreciate you coming back to talk to us again uh next weeks we're gonna have some great guests as well we'll announce them on social media uh go ahead and spread the love in a positive way be that guy be that girl in these hard times you know just a, a kind encouraging word uh to a friend or an acquaintance or a neighbor can really help more than you think and it doesn't cost you anything all right uh take good care of your family your friends your parents your kids even your co-workers uh let people know you got their back and, and you're there for them my dad used to say even when you're feeling the lowest one of the things you can do to make yourself feel better is to help somebody you know and so even if it's with moral support take good care of your pets make sure they have a warm uh, place if it's cold and a cool place if it's warm fresh water